My buddy who's standing right next to me in the next terminal, computer terminal, is looking at the same thing, except his guy's a serial rapist. What does he do? He releases him. I know how I sound. I understand that I stand in front of you and I sound crazy. I know it. There are times where I'm giving speeches where I'm thinking in my head internally what I'm going to say next, and I'm thinking, dear God, JJ, no one's going to believe you. No one. And I honestly, to be honest with you, I don't want you to believe me. I want you to fact check everything I say. And you're going to be shocked if you find out that everything I'm telling you is 100% factually true. Because I don't care to tell you anything else but the truth. Which leads me to my next and final aspect. And I saved it to last for a reason. Because I really, I just want to get it off my chest and I want to get out of here. To be honest with you. Because I hate it. I hate talking about it. I hate that maybe God chose me to come talk about it. Because it was kind of thrust on me. I didn't even know it. Typical God sneaks it in on you and says, okay, here you go, buddy. Let's see what you got. Because what I want to talk to you about is uncomfortable. It's dirty. And it's evil. And it's happening in your country. And your federal government is facilitating it. And it's child sex trafficking. I really do hate talking about this. I take no joy in coming to talk to you tonight about this. But I feel compelled that I have to. Just yesterday I came up from my studio in the basement where I feel like I'm talking to myself all day long and I'm giving interviews and I came up and my wife Connie said what's wrong? You look, you look like someone's bothering you. It was one of those days and I said I, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to detail it and go through it and tell everybody this horrific evil sin that our nation is turning into a cesspool. I'm tired of it. Typical of my wife. She said, well, you better turn around and get down there and keep me talking. Because there's a reason why you, this information was thrust upon you. Because my business partner, Ryan Madden, and I, who is a genius when it comes to documentaries and filming, he and I went on a journey seven, eight months ago to create a documentary called What is Treason? Invaded. And about a quarter way through, we could not believe what was happening. What was happening was every single interview, every single lead, was tied to pedophilia and child sex trafficking. So much so that halfway through, he and I made a deal. He's a Christian. And we said, if God wants us to do some child sex trafficking documentary, then he'll allow us to sell enough of these invaded, and then we'll go back and refilm and film and then get this out. Typical God, we come back and we start going through the hundreds of hours of hundreds of hours of interviews and lo and behold we have a gigantic child sex trafficking documentary staring us in the face we don't need any more footage we made a conscious decision that we need to get this out as fast as we can because we cannot morally sit on this what did we discover? we discovered the United States of American government Opened the borders and has allowed 500,000 unaccompanied alien children, ages ranging from infants to 17 years old, to pour into America, be turned over to cartel members on the north side and trafficked sexually, labor, organ harvest, child sacrifice. <laughs> Okay. 
I want you to understand who I spoke to. I didn't speak to people that heard about it, studied about it from afar. I'm talking to FBI whistleblowers that dealt with child sex trafficking, DHS whistleblowers, USCIS whistleblowers, all on child sex trafficking. I interviewed the people that worked inside the NGOs that were trafficking the children throughout the country. I talked to people that run child rescue organizations. I talked to people that go and look for the organizations that traffic children and, you, and give all the paperwork to law enforcement to go arrest them. Everyone I talked to, everyone I interviewed, those interviews lasted from an hour to five hours. And I asked them all the question at the end. It was more of a statement. I said, after everything that you've told me, I'm gonna ask you, give you a statement. All I want is a yes or a no. I said, my statement is, the United States American government is the world's largest child sex trafficking organization in modern history. I could not get the word history out before they were shouting, yes, yes, yes. They witnessed it firsthand. I asked two gentlemen, I asked all these people this question, explain to me, tell me, prove to me that I'm a guy that doesn't believe anything you're saying. Prove to me the federal government is child sex trafficking. Prove to me they know it. And they told me stories after stories after stories that I could not believe. But two stories stuck out to me very, very prominently in my mind. A man by the name of Carlos Ariano testified in front of Congress multiple times, went undercover for a U.S. Senator, and he worked inside the child detention facilities that dot the state of Texas, then he flew children across America, working for NGOs. And he said to me, every couple of weeks, there would be an all hands meeting and we would all go to Carrizo Springs or Picos, Texas. Those are two giant FEMA camps that house children in the thousands. In the thousands, you can't believe how big these places are. He says we would go there and then they would load up 200, 300 children at about midnight into buses and then we would drive south to El Paso. And I said, why are you going back south? He says, because in El Paso, there's a private airstrip and on that airstrip would be three airplanes that are unmarked and we would take all the children and we would push them into these airplanes and the, and the pilots and the flight attendants were forbidden to talk to us, and we were forbidden to talk to the pilots or flight attendants. And then in the middle of the night, they would fly us all over America, and we would land somewhere on another private airstrip, and on the airstrip would be rental cars, vans, and buses, and we would get into our assigned cars, and then I would drive my kids through the night, and they get to their destination by the morning, about six or seven in the morning. And he says, do you know who I gave these kids to? He said, I gave black kids to white people, Asians to Hispanics, Hispanics to whites. Around and around we went. He said, JJ, I was delivering people that were not family. And he hesitated, and I said, I need you to say it out loud, Carlos. What were you doing? J.G., I was trafficking children. Now, in my line of work, I'm always watching somebody's body language. I'm not listening to the words, especially if I'm taping them, like we do in criminal interviews. I don't really, I got tape, I go back and listen to it a hundred times. I'm just watching their body language. I'm seeing that they're lying to me. There's telltale signs, and I was really good at it. Really good at it. Carlos was telling me the truth, but I still am a skeptic by nature. Fast forward six, six weeks later, I'm in Colorado, and I don't let anybody know who I've talked to, because I don't want it tainted. I just want you to tell me your story. 
My partner Ryan Maddock has all the cameras set up, and he's over here in the corner. And I'm talking to a man named Basil. He runs a child rescue organization, 100% recovery, is recognized as one of the top in the country, maybe in the world. And I ask him the same thing I asked Carlos. Tell me, convince me. And Basil, who is a former CIA operative and special forces in the military, who is, he did things, and I know it. And he's telling me, let me tell you this story, JJ. My organization got a tip that two airplanes are going to fly into Chattanooga, Tennessee at 2 o'clock in the morning, and there's going to be 100 children in it. And I paused, and I looked at Ryan, and I gave him that look like, dear God, make sure your cameras are working, dude. And he tells me, we called the local PD, and they said, ah, don't worry about it, we've already heard they're coming in. And he says, I don't believe that. So we set up surveillance. Sure enough, 2 o'clock in the morning, here comes two planes, in the out of the darkness of the sky, lands in on the tarmac in a private airport, air, airplane, landing strip, and a hundred kids get pushed out like cattle. He said it wasn't like gentle, it was like prodding them and jammed them into two buses, and those two buses left in the dark at night. In my documentary, I showed video footage of these kids landing across America. I asked Basil, as well as I asked Carlos, what was going on? We were trafficking children. 100% trafficking children. Do you know who is moving the children? Carlos has a GED from McGowan, Texas. I'm not backing off because he had a GED. He's a smart guy, just not ac academically credentialed. The annual income in McAllen, Texas is $11,000 a year. He was making six to $7,000 a week. How do you get a thousand escorts? He said, we go to the local day labor site. And we hire everybody we can. We train them in a day. And then they, tra then they travel with these children as small and as young as babies to 17 years old, opposite sex. And then he told me what's happening inside of these detention facilities in America. And they are raping the children inside the facilities. Our DOJ, the most corrupt DOJ maybe in modern history, has actually began to sue Southwest Keys, which is, holds a couple thousand children in a gigantic Super Walmart, and they have been raping the children in there. Same thing with Catholic Charities. And then I ask these people that deal with this, and I'm gonna tell you because I, it has to be spoken out loud, because if we don't talk about it, we're never going to acknowledge it's true and happening, and we're never gonna do anything about it. I said, I need to know, even though I do not want to hear, I want to know what it looks like, sounds like, and smells like when you go rescue these kids. I need to know. Because if I'm gonna talk about it, I need to know what the answer is.